Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hit and Hustle from irisportsdaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, and with me, as always, is Jamie Uyama, Jamie University. It is Thursday. Oh, I have to check. I wasn't ready. Uh, Thursday, February 23rd. <laughs> I blew it. I blew it, Jamie. Thursday, February No, you got to get, you got to stick to the bit. Stick to the bit. Stick to the bit. It's, uh, we're going to be talking, um, oh my goodness, Corey the Flame. Uh, Greg the Flame Flamong. Bring it. All right, let's go. Corey Flynn. Thank you, Corey. Uh, Rajon says, good morning, boys. ND for Life says, good morning, all. All right, we are here. We're going to be talking about uh, the name that has emerged at uh, offensive line, offensive line coach, Matt Luke. Uh, Matt Freeman put it on the on the message board uh, last night that uh, Matt Luke interviewed, flew in with his family and interviewed for the uh, offensive line coach position at Notre Dame. Uh, and I think a lot of people are very excited about that. So we're going to talk about that. And then we have a rendition of Hot Take Thursday. We're going to be throwing out some flame takes and uh, just some things that I think we just think about uh, when we're, we're laying in bed at night, dreaming about uh, all American candidates and defensive ends and wide receiver breakouts and whether or not uh, Jeff Quinn was actually a good offensive line coach for Notre Dame. So we're going to talk about those things. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, if this is your first time listening to the show, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And uh, like we said uh, last week, or, or last uh, Tuesday, we have a podcast now. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. I put links in the description box below uh, when you're watching this video on YouTube. So click on those and su su subscribe there as well. If you can't catch the show on YouTube, uh, catch us on uh, on the Apple Pods or Spotify and uh, hit a rating, review, all those things. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. All right, Jamie, let's talk about uh, Matt Luke flying in uh, to interview for the offensive uh, offensive line coach position. I think a lot of people are very excited about this. He's got great pedigree coming from uh, Georgia. He was formerly the Georgia offensive line coach. He was formerly the head coach at Ole Miss before that. Um, banger recruiter. I mean, if you look at his, uh, his page in terms of who he's landed and uh, it's Five stars all over the place, right, Jamie? So um, a lot of people are fired up about him. Uh, left Georgia in, at the end of 2021 to take time off with his family. So just questions about, um, you know, him there. Uh, how motivated is he to, you know, get back into the recruiting game? You know, he mentioned that as an as a obstacle for him and one of the reasons why he wanted to get out of coaching. Uh, but obviously he's, he's flown into South Bend and uh, meeting with Marcus Freeman. So obviously there's interest there. So Jamie, what is your take on Matt Luke, the candidacy, and what are Notre Dame's chances here? Um, well, I, I think he's a great candidate. Like, I think that's the kind of guy that you would want to, um, I, I mean, I, I don't necessarily, like, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, like, say that Harry Heastand, he's like a, an immediate upgrade over Harry Heastand yeah. or anything like that, but... Um, when you're replacing someone like Harry Heastand, uh, you want to bring in somebody uh, with stature, right? And I think you want to bring somebody that you know that has a chance to potentially upgrade things. And uh, I think Matt Luke is that guy because, uh, like you mentioned, he's a heck of a recruiter. Um, he's a really good old offensive line coach. Um, obviously like Georgia had a great offensive line. He did a nice job with Ole Miss too. He's a guy who's been at, um, uh, worked, worked at Duke with David Cutcliffe. He's been all over, um, mostly the South. Right. But, uh, you know, he's, he's done, um, a really nice job wherever, wherever he's been. And he's also been a guy that, uh, his players really, really like him. Like that's yeah. a thing that when, um, you know, he was the interim coach and then, you know, had a chance to, uh, he was there for the whole debacle with uh, Hugh Freeze. So when that was going on, uh, you know, they had to decide whether or not they were going to do anything. And one of the reasons that they ended up promoting Matt Luke was because the players loved him, right? The players loved him. Um, and he's a guy who connects really, really well with players. Um, and I, I just, yeah, I, in terms of like getting a guy that, I mean, obviously wasn't fired from Georgia, walked walked away from Georgia. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be a pretty big, it would be a pretty big deal. It would be a pretty big deal. Um, you know, what are the chances of him going? I mean, the fact that he even came to, um, with his family to, to visit uh, South Bend and check everything out, that tells me it's like 
fairly serious. And and maybe yeah, you you're flying in your whole family too. It wasn't just family. That means uh, you know, they're checking things out to see if this is something that they want. Um, and not that it's not an intense job at Notre Dame. It is right. It, it is. It, there's a lot of demands for it. Um, but I also think that you know. Uh, Kirby Smart, it might be a little bit of a difference working for Kirby Smart, who is from the Nick Saban tree, who is, you know, it's very hard to work for Nick Saban. I think it might be uh, a little bit more tenable to work with someone like Marcus Freeman in terms of like maybe the stress of it all. Um, I also think um, recruiting at an SEC school compared to Notre Dame, and you know, it, yes, it is intense recruiting to Notre Dame and you're recruiting you know, big time guys. And that's always a, a, a tough uh, job. Um, but you can kind of, you know, I don't want to say Notre Dame recruits itself at the offensive line position, um, but you're, you're, you're set up in a good spot. It's not like he's walking in where it's like, Hey, Matt Luke, come to Auburn. And now you got to go right into Auburn and you got to, now you got to try to make Auburn. Yeah line you right you got to try to do this you already have this great foundation in place that was set in place from harry he stand to take over so i mean it, it's a really good a job i think it's like probably like a top three old line job in the country i would say alabama georgia i mean you could say um, michigan is up there too you have to right you have to say michigan is up there too uh it's top five for sure right it's yeah. top five for sure somewhere in the top five um and it could be as high as one if you get the right guy. And that's, I mean, he has a chance to uh, to, to potentially be that guy. Yeah. Uh, Westward Manor Film says he's kind of a dream candidate. Um, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. EK points out, no buyout. Very helpful. But we like we like that. Um, not having a buyout. Pat Desmond says if it all works out, Matt Luke, O-line coach, run game coordinator, sure has a nice ring to it. Uh, I think there might be something uh, to that. Um you know, we don't know if, if he even needs that, right? I'm sure Notre Dame is going to make it very financially uh, viable for him, no matter what uh, his role or his exact title is. But I think that's a good idea. Um, it, here's, the, here's the thing um, with Matt Luke. You, you mentioned the recruiting and Notre Dame kind of recruits itself. My thing is, is that that's true. Notre Dame does recruit itself. But Matt I just Luke, mean there's like a baseline of like, you know, there's going to be, you're going to have people interested. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. Right away. Yes. That's what I mean. So, so, so to, to your point that you just made, right. So like, if you're a wide receiver, you're thinking about USC just baseline, yeah. right. You're thinking about Oklahoma. You're thinking about, um, uh, you know, wherever they throw yeah. the ball. You make an yeah. offer, you're automatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You make yeah. an offer, Ohio you're State. automatically on the you're list. You're thinking about Ohio State. Yeah. Right. Ohio State. Um, off, right. Ohio State offers you as a receiver. They automatically, you're like, you put out a top 10. Well, then you make it a top 11. Because right. well, that, and and I think Notre Dame for an offensive lineman, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, agree. And so, but I, but Matt Luke has the, the background of actually landing those guys, yeah. you know, and, and Notre Dame, They've they've landed some right and and Blake Fisher right like he was not top fifty but I think we would consider him to be a top fifty prospect and I know you definitely did yeah um, when he was coming out so they've landed guys like that obviously Q Nelson right but like not a lot of the top ten guys not a lot of the top twenty guys right and that, and, the, and that's the caliber of recruit that Matt Luke has landed uh, and so that would be that would be huge right and I think uh, just adding him to the mix. Um, EK, of course. You know what? I, this I'm going to say this about EK. I appreciate the uh, the 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 he 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 likes to look at things as like the the kind of the Debbie I, I, Downer. I'm going to say EK and I appreciate has to change it. his his handle to the Devil's Advocate. He's the, always the going the other way. And you know what, EK? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Keep it coming. It helps you know what? Show. Deep South coach at Notre Dame, not the ideal fit. I'd rather have Minnesota guy. It's true. He is. I think that's. Oh, Old Miss, he's an Old Miss uh, grad, I believe he's it was. Old Miss grad, he's from Mississippi, yeah. I believe. I yeah, I think one of those things where, uh, I, I mean, when you know you said pretty close when he said pretty close to the dream candidate. I yeah. think if he was a guy, it's like, and he grew up in Chicago. People yeah. be like, oh <laughs> yeah, right, like it's not he's coming, right? Like that's how people view it, right? And I I, I get it. That's it's just like if somebody's like, um, uh, you know, Ohio State's going after a coach, and they're like. He's got Midwest roots. It's like, 
well, you know, he's going to go. He's going to take the job. Like, that's that's for sure. That's how people look at it. Um, at the same time, you can look at it like people were like, Air Parsegian, he's a Protestant. Oh, my yeah. God. Like, you know, <laughs> I, there's a lot of – that's happened at Notre Dame. It happened at a ton of schools for years. And even if you think about, like, you know, Nick Saban, even, he's from West – Nick Saban, from West Virginia, you know, coached in, in Ohio – was the Michigan State coach before he took that LSU job? No one was like, "Man, this guy's SEC all day," and now he's Mister SEC because he's yeah. like just dominated, right? Like he's just if some and Urban Meyer, not a, you know, he's a Midwest guy, right? He's a Midwest guy. He's not whatever. Go down to Florida. It's like if you're good, you're good, and if you if someone wants to make a fit, and that's why the whole thing too. It's like either he's gonna come up and his wife's gonna be like. I don't know. I don't think we can fit in here. I don't see our kids going up here, whatever. And, you know, maybe fair enough. Right. But like, I, I just think that, um, you know, there's something that like, you don't know until you know, right. Yeah. You don't know until you know. There is. So there was an article in the athletic written about him, about when he, when he resigned from yeah. Georgia and, and a lot of it, and I read it this morning and a lot of it is, you know, I, I was tired of being on my phone all the time. Like I'm at my kid's game and I'm on the phone trying to convince a recruit to come to Georgia, you know, and he, there was an anecdote in there where he, he said, you know, I, I, I didn't have my phone on me and I didn't know that I didn't have my phone on me. And for the first time it was like, I wasn't on it and I didn't need to be on it. And it, it just made him so happy. Right. And part of the appeal, I think of him, for Marcus Freeman, especially is like, he's a dynamite recruiter. Right. And so there is a concern there about how willing is he going to be to grind like he used to, you know? And yeah, you know, he sure. wants to, he wants his kids to, he wants to watch his kids play baseball and he wants to watch his kids play football and he wants to watch them do those things. And obviously he'd be giving that up and not just that, but his kids, they must have relationships in Georgia. He's been in Georgia for a long time. You know, if they're on a tribal baseball team or something like that's, yeah, you're with those guys, and right? Sports is different. Uh, you know, schools yeah. are different. I, I mean, everything's different, right? Right. So and sports in Georgia is different than sports in South Bend. It just a- is. Athens and whatever, <laughs> you know, no, no shade at uh, South Bend. Yeah. Athens yeah. Is, it's a nicer place to live than it's different. South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. It's a different scene. So uh, there, there's those things. It just, it gives me a lot, it, not even a little bit of pause. It gives me a lot of pause in terms of the likelihood of it happening, right? Like it doesn't, if he, if he did choose Notre Dame, I assume it would be because he he decided like yeah I, I do want to get back into it and my family yeah. is happy with that and we're we're good and we're in a good place and that sort of thing but at this point in the process it gives me a, a lot of pause in terms of just how willing um, are they going to be able to give up that stuff I think you know Shanti Irishman put up that point yeah that is something that is a, a thing for their kid if your kid it's, is it's a good point has a chance to go to to Notre it Dame is. like that is something that is that is definitely not nothing um what okay and i i i also read that article i think everybody has read that article by now because yeah. whatever um anyone who who uh as soon as they heard matt luke they probably googled and, and looked that up uh it was a really good article i believe it was seth emerson the, the georgia mm-hmm. beat writer who wrote it um yeah. and i think that does stick out um but then again it's like what I, sticks out to me is he's in his mid forties. Mm-hmm. So unless he, and, and he's been a coaching lifer really, right? Like he's been in, been in the game for a long time. So maybe he's someone who, that he needs to move on or that happens to everybody in, in their profession like that, or not to everybody, but it happens to a lot of people in the profession where they decide they need to move on from something. Um, but I think even the fact that he's entertaining it, shows that maybe he hasn't found that yet yeah yeah um or isn't sure about that and if he's not and probably whatever he's going to do is probably not going to pay nearly as well as what he'd get paid to be notre dame's o-line coach or somebody else's o-line coach right so um yeah i i don't don't know i i think um i'm sure there's a lot of talk that goes into it i'm sure his family uh it, it you know who knows how they're pushing and what direction he's in. Um, but I mean, I think it really comes down to you. You're glad that this is, he's someone that I think 
you know, you, you, you make a call to and you see the interest. And then as soon as you find out there's interest, yeah, you pursue it. And so you, you got to give uh, a lot of credit to Marcus Freeman for that. Uh, <laughs> TB12 for Heisman, please, Greg, do not start watching Georgia film. Uh, I will not. I will not. So famously, I and, and Jamie too, but I put it on Twitter. Like I'm watching, uh, I was watching Kansas State film. Then I was watching Utah film and that didn't work out. So uh, won't be putting in Georgia. Won't be doing that stuff. Um, Elton Johnson says, uh, let's hope they can do this hiring process without embarrassing the program. And um, wait, wait, wait a second. Is, uh, is your real name Elton Johnson? Like <laughs> Elton John? So like, wow. Get it? because it's I, close to the or is this or is this like a great handle i i just i need to know elton i need to any, know any relation <laughs> any yeah um. <laughs> is this like a nordic thing you know they always do that right where it's like uh you know isaac uh In ingrid son or whatever they yeah, always yeah, 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 I, yeah i need to know yeah. elton yeah. i need to know maybe 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 um, maybe he's just really yeah. into it nice i mean I, I i mean i mean i will say like who who knows <laughs> if he'll take the job or not, or we have to see what happens, but certainly um, with something that's with what's going on right now, there's certainly, I mean, this is something that's putting, I think both positive light in the program, just the pursuit of them. Um, you know what Elton Johnson, he says, yes, it is class of 76, same class as Rudy. I was Dylan Hall president. You know what Elton, if you were Dylan Hall president, then Rudy is the same okay. class as you, uh, were, my guy. Were you angry when Elton John's You're Rise to one. Fame came on, and then people were like, <laughs> "Elton Johnson"? Like, I need to. Oh, this. I first of all, thanks for coming in here, El Elton. Or, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to po actually poke fun. I just and I do, like, and I, I actually, I, I do want to comment on his in his original one yeah. uh, the, about embarrassing the program and the hiring process and stuff. Notre Dame has now, now that Matt Luke's name is out there, they are now vulnerable again to, unfortunately, it just is what it yeah. is, right? It, there's no way around. Well, it they can't look point. cheap now. They're not going to look it, cheap. Not, not only that, but it would look bad if, I mean, because <laughs> I was, I was joking with a couple of people, like at this point, now that Matt Luke's out there, like it's great because when they ultimately end up hiring Chris Watt, it'll just make it all the better. And, um, uh, and, uh, it would just be, it would be bad. But, uh, but the point is, is that they aren't and like now, anytime they don't land somebody, it's going to be kind of a black mark. Right. And yeah. so, you know, for their sake, hopefully this does work out for them because I think a lot, and the other part is a lot of people are very excited and yeah. that, and that's what makes it very different about the offensive coordinator thing, especially with Colin Klein, like no one really knew, right. Um, no one really knew if he was good or not or whatever, and it ended up not being him. Same I'm sorry, I'm just reading the, the, the Michael Bolton on I, the office Michael, space. The Michael Bolton on office um, space, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not laughing at your point, Greg, but yeah, keep going, yeah. sorry. No. Uh, well, let's just keep it with Elton. Let's keep, let's keep going with Elton here. I got ribbed a lot, especially when he came to Notre Dame to have a concert at the ACC. The concert was Elton John and the Carpenters. Carpenters. It was the weekend that Notre Dame beat USC at Notre Dame. Oh, man. That's great. Elton Johnson just just also, trying to. That's a, that's a pretty big get for the ACC. For, that is uh, a big get. Elton yeah. John? My goodness. Yeah. yeah My goodness. Really We're cool. off yeah. the rails. Hot yeah. take Thursday. Uh yeah. Elton Johnson was the was the better was the better Elton. Hot take yeah. on that. Dylan Hall president. I mean, that's that's uh that's, that's important not nothing. Stuff. Good job. That's important stuff. So okay. Back to Matt Luke. Um, so yeah, they, they they're vulnerable, you know. And if they don't land him, hopefully like the next coach is or like Bill Bedenball or something. Like someone who uh, who so. everyone else would be super fired yeah. about. So yeah. Um, we'll see where it goes. You know, look, obviously no guarantees. And and I think everyone understands like just I, at this point, just because it's uh, just because he's interviewing and he flew in doesn't mean anything's going to happen. Right. So yeah, uh, we're going to we're going to keep tabs on that and we'll we'll get back to everybody on that topic. All right. It's time for Hot Take Thursday. And I'm going to start with let's start with one of Jamie's before I go fully off the rails here. All right. Um, so we have. uh Spring football predictions from Jamie uh, on this one. And I'm going to say it. Uh, Bo Burnham and uh, Aiden Gobira. Fire Springs. Josh Burnham, I should say. Fire Springs from uh, those two guys. Jamie, why do you feel like that? 
how excited are people going to be? Are they going to be the spring flings for Notre Dame in 2023? Well, one, I think they're going to get a lot of reps. So I think that's going to be, a, you know, a big thing for them. So those guys are going to get a lot of reps. And whenever there's a lot of reps, you know, you're going to get to see those guys a lot. And I just, I'm, I was a big fan of both of them um, as recruits. I thought that both these guys um, have like a ton of talent. Um, I don't think they're going to be necessarily stars in, in 2023, um, at, you know, up to that point or like put on a trajectory where all of a sudden they're like overtaking starting spots or anything like that. Um, but I think by the end of spring, people are going to be talking about them because they're going to show out a little bit and uh, and do and do some stuff. And then the other thing is, too, is because they are um, working with the second and third team, for the most part, they should be. They're not going to have to go against Joe Alt and Blake Fisher. So they get, you know, they get to kind of like work their way up. And, and you know, hopefully by the end of spring, they are getting reps against the ones more, um, you know, more frequently. But I do think that... Um, you know, it's both those guys are exciting, exciting um, prospects and have a chance to be really, really good. Yeah. And like you said, the opportunity um, and I think, it, you know, it kind of needs to happen because if, if you're going to be like really good at Notre Dame or anywhere and, and you, you're coming off of um, your, your freshman year and you didn't really do much like you want to see like, OK, like you want them to be like, hey, we're very excited about these guys. You know, because that's usually how it works. If you're going to be a really good player, the the after your freshman year, going into the spring and going into your redshirt freshman year, if you didn't play, that's when it pops. And you want those guys to pop. Um, it kind of flies in the face, too, of your your other one, though, that we'll bring up that one later, um, because that one is 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 way out of I don't want to say out of pocket but it's it's uh it there's a lot of projecting there so we'll talk about that in a little bit all right so I'm gonna do a thing where I I just said don't jump uh, the jump the gun on Matt Luke and don't uh, you know don't uh don't count your chickens and or count your eggs and all what whatever the saying is I don't know yeah. Jamie uh, count your chicks but, before they're hatched. Count their count their count their eggs before they're hatched. That's right. All right. So, but I am going to say that the the trio of Jared Parker plus Gino Gadouli plus Matt Luke is greater than a Tommy Reese plus Harry He stand pairing. So if nothing had changed, or a Matt or Andy Ludwig. Uh, and uh, Harding, the the offensive line coach for Utah, I think that's I think that's a better trio. I think on a couple of different fronts, I think it's a better trio on the recruiting front. I, I think it's a hundred percent better on both sides. Right, put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, thank you, thank you, Tyler. I cannot speak today, but that's fine. All right, so I, I think it's better. Recruiting front is better. I, I we, we've talked about we talked about Jared Parker being a a very effective recruiter for Notre Dame. And especially so now that it's not just tight ends, it's going to be the whole offense. I think Gino Gadouli is, is lesser known on the recruiting front, but from the development front, I think that could be an upgrade over Tommy Reese as quarterback coach. And I think Matt Luke is a hundred percent going to be an upgrade over Harry. He who look when he was hired the second time we spoke about it a lot. Just not a great recruiter. Not a great recruiter. That is just true. He wasn't into it. We were told all these things about how he was reinvigorated and all these other things. Just it wasn't his thing, and other people had to pick it up for him. No one has to pick up for Matt Luke. Okay. Um, as far as turning out quality lines, I think Matt Luke has done just as well. Uh, and I think Andy Lug, I mean, in the end, Andy Ludwig, um, Harding piece like any Ludwig a not the dynamite recruiter B never developed a, a powerful offense. He's been a good running offense and that's great. Yeah. But like, that's not what Notre Dame was looking for. Right. And that's not what they wanted. And I think with Jared Parker and while, while he says like, okay, I'm, we're going to be doing the same stuff. He does. He's a wide receiver, man. What do these wide receivers want to do? Jamie, they want to throw, they want to yeah. be involved. They want to push the ball. They want right? a lot of targets. They want, they want yeah. a lot of targets. And look, he, he he was recruited into an air raid system. I just think it's it's in his blood. 
It's in his DNA. I think he wants to do that. And I think that trio, the trio, right? So any like Parker by himself, not better than Reese or Ludwig, at least on paper, right? Not, but it's not just him. It's the trio. And I think the trio matters. And I think that's where it goes. And so that that's what I think, Jamie. I, I think if they end up with Matt Luke, I think they're that they they emerge from the 2023 coaching carousel in a better place offensively than they did going into it. Um, well, I think uh Notre Dame fans should really hope you're right. I mean, that they would should. be great. That would be they great should. for Notre Dame if that's the case. Um I I do think that um especially because I mean, Tommy Reese and Harry, he said, we're not going to be, I think it would have been one more year tops for both of them. If, even if, if Tommy had stayed, he stand would have stayed for that one year and then left again. Too. Yeah. So I think that also has to be kind of factored into it as well. Um, and especially too, because I think as the, the further you get away from, you know, or, or the closer you get to creeping to walk out the door, the less interested you get into, um, you know, recruiting for the future and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think in the, from that sense too, uh, I, I do think the, you know, the trio uh, really is what have probably been better off. Um, the one thing with Ludwig and Harding, I, I mean, yes, whatever. We talked about how he uh, has never had a really explosive passing game. That is, that is a really big problem. Um, one thing I'll say though, I think Harding is a really, really good offensive line coach. Mm. Um, and I don't know how he would recruit at Notre Dame. Um, like I don't, I don't really know much. It's, it's so hard when it's someone who's been like his previous stop before that he's been at, 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 uh, Utah for many years now. And his previous stop was Wyoming before that. And then he mm. was like a high school coach and whatever. It's, it's one of those things. Um, and, uh, you you don't know um how it is like you, you don't know how how he'll be but i think he is a very very good coach and would have done a really good job at notre name um would then that would be like the only thing that would give me a pause but i, I will say this i do th agree like the, the upside is higher the upside is higher. yeah 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 and i think that's i think that's what i know look that's what marcus freeman is like that's the whole idea behind marcus freeman right and, and I think if you're going there, then you, then you, then you lean into it, you lean into that upside. And that's what I'm leaning into in this conversation. And not just that, but the, the, the motivation factor with Jared Parker, like he's motivated to prove Marcus Freeman, right? Like that's what he's thinking about. And that's what he mentioned in his press conference. I, I want to prove him right. He took a chance in me and I am yeah. motivated to do it for him. Whereas Andy Ludwig, like he doesn't have that fire, right? He does. And first of all, we know he doesn't. He, he can take well, the job. It, he could, well, and the other thing is he's easily could go to Notre Dame and fail and then just fall back and be a coordinator somewhere else and right. just be fine because that's just what he's been. He's then he's like, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to be at this level. I don't have to yeah. be at that level. Like he could have e easily been like that. Um, and I think the one thing too is like, as I read some like whatever hate for just, hate because they just people think it's going to go back that's fine whatever people can think however however it's it's going to go but i do think there are like like that kind of response whatever you don't need to you don't have to post it or whatever but there's like the response that it's it's definitely going to go bad these guys are going to suck or whatever right? yeah, yeah yeah is so far off of what anyone would could possibly know and even if you like you can't even brag about being right because it's like you're just guessing right at this point just like anyone would be guessing that it's going to go great like no one no one knows for sure like this isn't um jimmy like hiring john donovan where it was like uh this guy was like bad mm -hmm. why is he getting this job right now like i i don't understand that and then and then it turns out oh he did bad and was their offense like sucked at washington right like that isn't this so i i you know making kind of like sweeping conclusions like it'd be one thing if you were like uh you know parker was the oc at west virginia and he was in control of everything and they sucked they were really bad yeah. and it's like okay then then i i would just be like i think people could just 
feel free rip it just rip it and, and be totally true true and like you said we won't truly know until 2024 yeah so why yeah. make any sweeping conclusions right now that it's going to be like horrible until then yeah right and and the thing about to the hiring process is people assume that and, I, and people look at it as kind of like a binary or like this guy was better versus that guy and we ha we have to wrap our minds around the fact that more than one person could come in and do a good job. There is no single correct candidate. You know, th there could be multiple people like, like five different uh, offensive coordinators could have come in or whoever Marcus Freeman wants, and they can come in and do a good job with Notre Dame offense and do well. Right. Like there's, yeah. it doesn't have to be just one guy who was like, that's the best one. We don't know who's best because th that's impossible to know. You, someone's coming in to do it. Right. And so that person with the material that they have, with the situation that they have, they have to create a good offense. Multiple people can do that. It doesn't have to. So it, Marcus Freeman doesn't have to make the perfect hire. And that's why I'm looking at the three of them. It's like, I don't know that three, like I can see that really working out for Notre Dame, especially the upside piece that you, uh, you were talking about where it's just like, and, 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 and that's especially true with Matt Luke, right? Like I wouldn't. So, I mean, we'll see who, if another O-line candidate emerges, I'm not really sure, but like when that person comes up, we'll debate their situation, but Matt Luke in this situation, I feel like that pushes it over the top for me. I mean, this is a real, I mean, he was a head coach at the, in the SEC school, like yeah. recently, you know? So I, I just, I, I think that would be really good for Notre Dame. And I, and I think that's, I think mean, that's better for, um, you know what they had uh, going into it. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Coach Humph says, I have hot takes, but they might be too hot for daytime YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I do want to ask if anyone on the ISD staff knows if the recruits offered have already been deemed academically fit for Notre Dame. Just like in general, I guess the ki kids offered. I mean, an offer now is we're getting into the game. They won't offer anyone who for sure doesn't have any yeah. chance. If they have no path towards getting into Notre Dame, they're not going to offer that person yeah. because they look at they do look at transcripts, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if they really like a player and they think there is a path for that person to get into Notre Dame, um, yes, then they will offer them. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that they that they are on. They're definitely. They might not they have to take a couple extra steps down that path that maybe they wouldn't, whatever. There's some of those people in there too. And I mean, it's happened, you know, a few times in recent years where they have taken people who have, you know, been committed or signed and then didn't, you know, do what they needed to do to get into Notre Dame. And that happens as well. Um, not frequently, it's very infrequent, but that does happen. So um yeah, but I mean, for the most part, they're they're not. I mean, definitely when you hear or or they'll offer somebody and then you hear, oh, they're not recruiting them anymore. I mean, sometimes that's because of character, or whatever. Sometimes it's because they're like, oh, they looked more into their academic background yeah. and they were like, oh, there's no chance this person is going to get into Notre Dame because they did more background check on them in terms of like, you know, what they were taking, you know, how they how they fit and whether or not they could get into the school. Yeah, I think it is a little different now where it's like the offer is like, hey, we, we need you to be considering yeah. this. They're not going to do the thing where it's like, hey, we're interested. We're not going to extend an offer because we want to check on X, Y, Z. Yeah. If they're interested as you a player, they'll offer. And yeah. then they'll check on that other. And stuff. when when people come on visits, they visit with like an academic uh, person uh, on campus when typically, right, when they, they're on a visit and it's like a structured visit, they have like an academic meeting um, with – with with someone and um and then that at that time too they learn sometimes they're like oh it, that might be the point where they learn it's not a fit you know yeah. or or like or oh, i do think uh, you know or or they might have had questions before and then they go into that meeting and they're like oh i do think this person is going to be a fit right like yeah so that happens too all the time yeah um all right jamie let's go into your uh second hot flaming take Tell me about Tobias Merriweather, huge breakout in 2023. Let's go. Yeah, I just think, okay, one, 
I think he was going to have a big second half, if not for the injuries, the concussion, the concussion that that kept him out. Yeah. So, um, and that was like a lingering thing that was, you know, it wasn't like a one week thing. Um, so he missed like a ton of practice time, wasn't able to play in games. And I think even with, you know, considering the limitations at quarterback with Drew Pine, I think he still was going to get, you know, he still was going to get chances because they really like, I mean, a lot of those like Dion Colsey stepping up and doing that. Some of those could have been Tobias Merriweather targets. Yeah. Right. And even if you look at the bowl game where he's healthy for, I mean, he was basically open for two touchdowns that Buckner missed him on. Mm -hmm. So that would have obviously, if you do things like that, like it changes how people view, um, view him. Right. So, um, yeah, like I think that, uh, um, he's someone who's like, would have already showed more signs of that. And now, because he only had the one catch, it was a, you know, obviously a very big play, right. it, it, you know, you might be like, Oh, what are we going to see from him? I think we're going to see, he's going to be the guy, one of the guys who's most talked about in spring. I think, you know, Notre Dame needs a deep threat. They, they desperately need a deep threat. I think he's a guy who can, you know, stretch the field vertically. I think he's a guy who can probably win 50, 50. He's going to be stronger than he was last year. He's going to have it. I, I think his potential is sky high. And I think he's going to go from, you know, one catch basically to if he's not wide receiver one, he's going to be like, pushing for that at some point next year. I think he's going to have a monster, monster year. Yeah. And, and so he's going to be working on the field. He's, he's trying to win the field spot position, uh, which is open right now. Right. So Braden Lindsay uh, leaves the program. And so he's there. The, the field spot is, is an open uh, competition. And I think he's going to win it. And with Sam Hartman, he is a guy who, who uh, we've, how many times have I have we talked about it on this show? The whole field is open now. It's not all boundary stuff. It's not all, you know, boundary, middle of the field to Michael Mayer. Like now you're opening up the field spot. I think there's so much more in play. I think we're going to see slant routes in 2023, uh, which again to the field. Um, and 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 you're you have a quarterback who wants to who wants to take chances, who wants to go deep. He, he wants to stretch the field. He wants to be explosive. Like that's what he's about. And, and a guy like Tobias Merriweather is a perfect candidate for that because not just the fact that of his own ability, but then you have, you have uh, Caleb Smith senior on the other side, right? Who it's like, he's the senior guy. He's the reliable one on the boundary. Like that's like defenses are going to have to adjust to that spot yeah. right a little bit and you do give up something and the other part too is not a lot of teams work the field like that like that was why will fuller was such a weapon because yeah. teams just don't go to the field and they don't no one rotates their defense towards the field because of that and that so i think tobias merler is going to have a lot ton of opportunities when when i went to the usc game uh watching warm-ups watching tobias warm up it's like a revelation, just the way that he gallops he's around the field. He's a different dude. He just yeah, is, he moves has that different. About him, he yeah. moves different than everybody else. And just watching him gallop around, I just I sent messages to people like, man, this guy. It's just I can't I can't wait till he gets till he gets right because he's got that ability. He has the he he moves in a way that no one else does. And I think he's hungry. That's the other thing. He he is a. And, and if you know his family and his sisters and track and everything, and his dad's a track coach and, and, and everyone is just super motivated there. And I think he, and he has the right mindset too. He doesn't have a, you know, he wasn't a powder, right. That wasn't his thing. He, he I think he's very motivated to, to have a huge season in 2023. And so I, I agree with you, man. Like I, I buy, I will buy all the Tobias Merriweather stock there is. Um, And so that's, that's, I think that's a good take by you. And no one, uh, no one disagrees with that um, in the chat. Here's one that I think a lot of people are going to disagree with in the chat. And look, and the reason I bring this up is because uh, we're, we're looking for uh, Notre Dame's looking for offensive line coach again. Okay. And the last time this happened, Notre Dame hired Jeff Quinn. A lot of people were upset. 
right? A lot of people were upset. People were very upset. Yes, people did not like that. And 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 to be clear, a lot of those people were players on the on the Notre Dame football team who did not want it to be Jeff Lloyd. Okay, and then, so that's all true. And so people are and and now that the spot is open, people are bringing <coughs> up Chris Watt again. They want Chris Watt to do it. And my thing is like, if you want Chris Watt to do it, then then you should be fine if Jeff Quinn is going to do it. Now I don't think. I think there are better candidates than Jeff Quinn, but that doesn't escape the fact that Jeff Quinn was good. Jamie, Jeff Quinn did a good job at Notre Dame and he gets too much. He gets too much flack for doing a good job. Now, did he do a great job? No, No. I would not say he did a great job. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying when people talk about him, people talk about him like he was BVG level bad. You know, BVG yeah. level like disaster, and I, I, I reject, I reject it. Oh yeah, yeah, that I is. Throw just, it out. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not having it, and I don't think his name should be slandered, Jamie. I don't, I don't like it. Okay, what's the truest measure of success in the game of football and in sports generally? What is it? Wins I, and losses, wins Jamie. And losses. Wins I mean, they won a lot losses. of games. Twelve and one in 2018. 11 and 2 in 2019, 10 and 2 playoff appearance. So playoff appearance in 2018, yeah. playoff appearance in 2020, 11 and 2 in 2021. Okay. Now, you, and now look, it'll be, oh, you know, it was, uh, it was because of the defense and look at this game. It's that they won the games, man. They won the games and that's what they did. Okay. Liam Eikenberg, starter in the NFL. Aaron Banks, starter in the NFL. Robert Hainsey. Started games in the NFL. Jarrett Patterson, who was Jeff Quinn's guy. Wasn't Harry Heastan's guy. Jeff Quinn's guy. Starter, captain, going on in the NFL, right? Blake Fisher, our favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Joe Alt, our favorite thing in the world, right? Those are those are Jeff Quinn guys. Zeke Carell, Jeff Quinn guy. Uh, Billy Strauss. Sort of Jeff Quinn guy, <laughs> like, like maybe, maybe, maybe Billy Strauss. But it, it, he was in a Jeff Quinn class, but I mean, he wasn't going to be a Jeff Quinn guy. He wasn't going to be a Jeff Quinn guy, but Andrew Kostovic, Jeff Quinn guy, right? So when yeah. four fifths of the next offensive line that everyone thinks is so good and is going to be the 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 strength of the team are all Jeff Quinn guys, I think you get credit for that. And I'm certainly not giving credit to Harry Heastan because you know what? No one gave Jeff Quinn credit for Eichenberg or Banks or or Lug or uh, Hainsey, who who barely played under under uh, Harry Heastan, right? Didn't yeah. play that man, that much. At no, all. they played more years for for Quinn than they did Harry Heastan. Absolutely yeah. true. And I, I'm still going, Jamie, because I have I have a lot of thoughts on this. I I, I do, I do, I do, I do. Here's the thing, Harry Harry Heastan. His offensive lines, incredibly healthy. His his injury luck was unbelievable, right? Like he had he he was without Jarrett Patterson for one game this year. And by the way, that game did not go very well. Now, granted, it was against a good team, but his first game back against Marshall that didn't go very well either. Okay, but that was one game of injury luck. In 2018, Jeff Quinn loses his best offensive lineman, Alex Bars. Right? Alex Bars yeah. goes out week five, still go 12 and 0, still go on to the playoffs. Right? Yeah. What? He had no. He had a lot of. I was gonna say he had a lot of. He had to deal with a lot of injuries. The next year was oh, a lot of injuries. Twenty nineteen, he lost Hainsey. He lost Hainsey and uh, Tommy Kramer. Lost both of those guys for the season. In the middle 2020 of the year, was really the only year. And then he lost Jarrett Patterson at the end of the year. Yeah, he lost Jarrett Patterson for the season, and then he lost. Uh, and then he lost the backup Zeke Carell, and they had to start Josh Lug at center in the ACC championship game. No one's no one's great uh, no one's great situation. And then in 2021, obviously he loses uh, Blake Fisher in the uh, in the first half of the first game. Then he loses Carmody in the in the the first half of the next game. Yeah, that was obviously I mean, a big horrible disaster. luck at the the left tackle spot that year. Yeah, it was it was a disaster for him. Yeah. And then to cap it all off, Jamie, the man was was out after 2021. He was out. Okay, when 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 BK left, okay, there was going to be a change. Kept recruiting for Notre Dame. Coached through the bowl game. Coached hard. Okay, so it wasn't yeah. like he was putting in the work. Integrity. Put in the work. Went out recruiting for Notre Dame when the job was not his. Jeff Quinn was good. He did a good job, and people should think of him fondly. 
That is my Jeff Quinn rant. And so go. Um, you know what? I don't hate this rant at all. That, yeah, um, there we I go. Don't, I don't hate this rant. No, neither I, is Coach Humph, who is my favorite person in the chat today. Yeah, uh, I, I will say he gets way too much hate. I think, um, uh, like Rajon kind of said, Quinn, too much uh, too much bad Quinn, is put on Quinn him. Quinn underrated. He stand maybe a little overrated. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's There's probably fair. I think, well, okay, well, one of the things I wrote about in Six Thoughts today, right? Oh, here's the other thing. 2020, that year that it was all set up in place, there were finalists for the, you know, Joe Moore Award, you know? Um, and and the, the one thing with, with He Stand um, is I think he obviously did a fantastic job of developing individual talent. Some of the best... Offense. Well, I mean the history of Notre Dame, like, like Zach Martin, Quinn and Nelson, they make the all time team, right? Yeah. They make the all time team. And you know what? Like, honestly, you could argue that like Ronnie Stanley, you know, is, is a candidate too, right? Yeah. Like um, Mike McGlinchey would, you know, probably be on the second team or whatever, like uh, really, really good players that, that he helped develop and weren't five stars, right. That he mm -hmm. helped, uh, you know, help them become, uh, how they, how good they were. But one of the things is, is that Notre Dame wants to be old on you, right. S says we're old on you. And they point to look at this all pro Zach Martin, this, whatever. Notre Dame is not old on you. They're not, um, Alabama plays way better up front than they do. They just do. They put more guys in the league. They put, they recruit better. You know, that's part of it. Uh, they recruit better and they, they've won multiple Joe Moore awards and they've been a finalist six out of eight years. Notre Dame has only been a finalist, I think twice, I think maybe three times. So, so three out of eight and they won one. Uh, 17 and 20 they were a finalist yeah so that that was that was it and michigan could say like oh we, we're old on you they won back-to-back -back joe moore awards right i they mean there's it. your hot take right there notre dame's not o-line you that's the well they're not i mean they're not they're not o-line you and, and it's it's i don't even think it's a hot take i think it's just reality that because they're everybody talks about the old like what is the old offensive line about it's about playing as a unit and and having this success and, you know, I saw some people say, too, like, they never showed up in the beginning. No, that's not – that isn't entirely true. Like, and that's another thing you can say about Jeff Quinn. Like, in that one – that that Clemson game, at that home game in 2020 was about as big as possible. And the old line really showed up in that game. Same this year with Harry Easton. They really yeah. showed up in the Clemson game this year. So there's points to it. And, and it's – some of it is, you know, offensive coordinator base, too, and how you're going to look at it. Um I, I do think Jeff Quinn, I don't think, I, I think Ed, like JND mentioned, so why isn't he the O-line coach today? It's because good isn't good enough. That's the thing. I, I think that's why, right? Right. And and that's why too. And that's why, even though I think Harry Heastan, I think a lot of people would have been happy if he would have stayed for a long time. But for all the things you can say about Harry Heastan and all the individual development he did, his units weren't routinely among the best in college football yeah and they are at alabama they are at michigan they have been at georgia right with with matt luke has been a part of that you know he's only part of that for two years but they have been a part of that so that's a problem right and and i do think when you look at jeff quinn context is everything in terms of like those injuries and all that and and everything that he had to deal with and i think also too like i mean he deserves a lot of credit for Joe Alt, like getting Joe Alt and, and yeah, and the guy was two hundred and forty sure. pounds. Yeah. yeah, Um, so that that's I think was like something that you know when it comes down to it, when people say about like Joe Alt, like I mean Joe Alt wasn't getting offered by other places like Notre Dame, so um, that that is a, definitely a win. Um, I think he gets too much heat and I think it's, I think it's a total fair thing. I think he was pretty good. I think he was pretty good. He wasn't great. I don't think he's the guy that you would want over in the long term. I think he's better, but in terms of like how he recruited way better than people give him credit for. 
how the the, the offensive line played better than he's given credit for. For sure. That's my thing. It's, it's, it's one thing to say, like, like he was great. Like, so Westward Manor Films says, like, he agrees with the point. The question is, is he good? Is, is being good enough at Notre Dame or should he be great with the Notre Dame attracts with a particular position? Yes. Right. I'm not saying that, like, he was awesome. Like, I don't want Notre Dame yeah. to hire him. It's in this cycle, but, right? but there's a lot of people who act like he was trash, like the it's worst terrible. guy ever. Like, like, and it's like he got BK stink on him because of you know his right. previous relationship with, and it was unfair. And, and it's it's like how yeah, he got BVG stink because it's like people were like, Oh, BVG was the worst. Yeah, he was the worst. He was not a good hire, it was a terrible hire, didn't do a good job at Notre Dame at all. But not everyone was BBG. There was there was a plenty of other Grand Valley guys. Mike Denbrock was a Grand Valley guy, and he was a good coach for Notre Dame, right? Like, I I mean, I, you can look at it from other ways. Some it's just like how everyone's going to point to these Cincinnati guys who are connected to Freeman. I mean, most of them have been pretty good so far. So yeah. I, I don't know if people should hate on any like oh another Cincinnati guy. The other Cincinnati guys have been really good. So like, I mean, I think uh it, it, they have a chance to work out yeah um uh, coach hump says question for jamie and greg why is that no one except me wants to acknowledge the 2021 season's o-line there's no totally way that you're the only person who's acknowledged we, a lot we of people talked about, talked about it. we talked about it a, time. a lot of yeah, people it, it, it was a whole thing yeah. right and, yeah. and, and and that's part of my uh yeah. my, my defense of him as a thing so all right we'll move on to the final one jordan patelho all-american candidate 2023 let's hear it jamie Okay, so convince me. The thing with Jordan Motello uh, was obviously he had a breakout in the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. You know, had a really good bowl game. Uh, you know, finished the season last six games of the year, six and a half tackles for loss. Right, um, really good pass. Like his pass rushing win percentage over the course of a year would have been elite. Would have been elite. Like you're talking was, like a 15, 16 sack season. With his numbers, yes, that would over the course of the season. Over the course of the season, well, or well, not necessarily would have been a 15 16 sack season, but it would have been, um, I mean, double digits for sure. Oh, yeah, double digits for sure. And I don't think it's like crazy to think that he could do that this year. And the reason I think he's going to be an all American is because the reason why he wasn't playing before and why he didn't, whatever. It, why he didn't like break through and it was on him. It wasn't like the coach is not giving him a chance or whatever. Like he's had his other issues that he's had to deal with, but the guy can play. Mm. I mean, he's a player and he proved it when he got the opportunity and some guys too, just like as much as like the frustrating as they are in, in certain aspects, talent is talent. And he's got talent and he's got a talent for rushing the passer. And I just think that, you know, even though it was like a, not, not atypical that it was like a year three breakout for someone that happens quite a bit. Right. But I think he probably would have broke out before if he had his head on straight earlier. And now, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I got one. I, I Chase Claypool. Yes. It, there it is. Yes, There's the comp example. right there. Just perfect. Uh, perfect example. And I think Chase Claypool too. I want to say if Chase Claypool had a bit, you know, had his stuff together before then, he probably would have been an all. They he had an all American caliber season in his last year. He just didn't just, have the hype going. Into he didn't it. have the hype going into it. He had the hype if you had went to a Notre Dame practice and you were like, oh my god, this guy's like unstoppable. Like he was literally. I, I yeah. The, he was the most dominant receiver I've seen in a single camp. Like he's like, and Troy Pride's a pretty good player, and yeah. he made Troy Pride look like a little kid. Like he was dominating him over and over and over again. Um, and I think, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, like Jordan Battelle. I'm not saying Jordan Battelle is going to do that for for the offensive tackles Notre Dame's. You know, he's going to go against the practice every day. But one, I think one iron sharpens iron, so he's going to go against two pretty good offensive tackles a lot. Mm -hmm in camp uh so that's gonna help his game and the other thing is i just think when the lights go on he's a guy that knows how to make plays right he he, he knows how to make plays so 
I think he's going to, um, you know, be a guy who makes uh, a big difference this year. And even if he isn't like on all American teams by the end of the year, he'll be someone that like, he'll have an all American caliber season. I like it. I like it. EK yeah. says uh, Canadian high school football to Notre Dame is a giant leap. Hawaiian high school football to Notre Dame is a giant leap, right? Like it's not yeah. that dissimilar. Um, yeah. I don't think that was his, that, that was not that was his problem. He's a freak athlete. Like he is just whatever. Like he was, was never any, and he's, if you know, he started as a sophomore, he started as a sophomore. He had like, you know, a couple big games. I think he had a couple two a hundred yard games when he was a sophomore. He yeah. had things that, as, a, you know, he made plays as a junior. Like, wasn't. He just was madly inconsistent. And then all of a sudden, it kind of just clicked for him at the right time, right? All right. Um, all right. Tyler says, Tyler wants EK. So, EK, we have like three minutes left. Say something positive about Notre Dame before we leave. Come on. You, I, it's in there. It's in there. And I don't want passive aggressive either. I want a, a legitimate positive thing about Notre Dame football in 2023 let's hear it before we leave so I I look Jamie I'm in I I like it um it's just a quick it, how many times have we seen it right like a senior is it's like he's going in your 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 senior year right you're you're the the ultimate upperclassman on on the team and it clicks it just clicks yeah. for you we've seen it so many times right on, on various positions uh asmar Bilal is a player yeah. the similar thing chase claypool similar thing dexter williams similar thing right sometimes it just it's 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 your time and it and sometimes it's just opportunity like it's like right. if you know you're the guy the position opens like the position it's clear you know it's you're the clear, guy yeah. yeah um all right ek sam will make us look good thumbs up ek's in on sam hartman Congrats. Right. That, that's there it is. Hey, guys. I love it. Love it. EK, EK feels good about the, uh, it feels good about the quarterback position. Uh, Westward Manor film says, it re- honestly, it feels like really needs Patel to take a leap forward. They do. And that's another they thing. Do. He's it's the senior thing, right? He knows they need it. That there's an opening there and he's, and he uh, has the opportunity. I mean, James he's going to be in on third he's down. Leaping through. He's yep. going to get a ton of, ton yep. of chances to rush the passer. Like it's just, I mean, someone has to replace the production. That is going. It's going to you know that you're going to miss it from Isaiah Foskey, and I think I mean he's going to get a ton of snaps to try to prove that. Love it, love it. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Uh, if this is your first time catching the show, hit the like, hit subscribe button, and uh, check us out on uh, on Apple Pods and Spotify as well. I'm going to be uh, editing this and then putting it up there um, as soon as we get off. So you're going to want to uh, check in with us again. Hit up irisportsdaily.com for any uh, more uh, offensive line updates from Matt and Christian. And, and yeah, we'll talk to you uh, next week, at least uh, next Tuesday on our normal time. And if we have uh, any other breaking news, we'll, we'll go live for that as well. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.